Well, hey guys, welcome to Hope Rescue Podcast. I'm Kimberly Scott, and this is my husband, Tim. And uh, you're wearing animal I know, today. Rouge. <laughs> oh, wow. People can't see that <laughs> at home, good. but I, oh, get, boy. I never wear animal print, and I don't know why, because I do love it, and I have several pieces, but... Anytime that I do wear it, yeah. I get teased by you and my daughter because my mom wears it all the time. Has so much animal print. So. We had to do an intervention. And Gracie, yeah. who is our new uh, producer of this show, uh, she's sitting over here. She once once went into her closet and counted 67, am I right, Grace? Yeah, 67 pieces of animal print. That's when you know you have There's, a problem, no, Tim. When, you know when it's a problem where all day you've been wearing animal print, and then you, she gets ready. <laughs> the first time she stayed over, she gets ready for bed. She goes, oh, I need to go take a shower and uh, get, and get in my pajamas. Yeah. And she comes out. She's got animal yes. print. Yes. Pajamas. She loves it. So they were missionaries for I'm years. I'm wearing animal print underwear right now. <laughs> she uses that as her excuse that she has a, she's very globally minded. So she has a lot of like Global. cheetah. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's and, just one yeah. continent. It's, I know. It's so funny. It's, it's Africa. I always she's tell good. her, okay, mom, you can wear animal print, but only one at a time. You can't do cheetah and zebra together. No, that's, that's when we're going to have to put you in a special home. <laughs> hey, guess what's coming up? Oh, tell me, Santa. Christmas. Yes. And you know how much I love Christmas. I know. I was teasing you a few weeks ago that you're the Scrooge, but you're actually... I'm not. You're not I, a Scrooge. You get excited about the holidays well, around here. Well, uh, we're going to talk about what makes Christmas great, right? Yes. Or how yes. to make Christmas how great. How to make Christmas great, right. yeah. So... Um, I, I've had some stumbles over the years. Yeah, usually in, in around Christmas the financial time. part of Christmas. Yes. <laughs> ever, ever <laughs> and since, all the dads said, yeah. Ever since I've been a dad, which now is mm -hmm. 46, 47 years. Yeah. Uh, this is my 47th dad Christmas, so I would say. Yeah. Something like 46. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of money involved. There is. But our budget has remained the same since since we've been married for 15 years. Yeah. And for inflation the has gone up, but our kids' expectations <laughs> have stayed low, thankfully. Well, they've had to stay the same because we don't change our budget. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, but that being said, I mean, this is kind of an unusual Christmas. When, here's a question for Christmas <laughs> and birthdays. What do I want? So, no, here's think think about this. We have uh -oh. no, babe. You always tell me what you want, and and it's always you pick it out and then I pay for it. Oh, you're such a good husband. I know I am. Anyway, so but here's there's a something that happens yes. as a parent and you become a grandparent when you stop giving substantial gifts mm -hmm. and you start giving like uh, five bucks and then it gets down to a dollar. My grandmother used to give us like 50 cents or something like that. But one year, one of our kids, it might've been Gracie, got a, a, a stick of gum from oh, my mom. Oh, that's sweet. I do remember that. that was, so that's all she had. I think I was going to say what, what now we, what you don't know as a kid, but you learn as you get our age and you start, of course with seven kids and we have six grandkids so far yeah. is that, it starts to make sense because the more a pack kids, of gum so you don't just have your kids, you have your kids, their spouses and their significant others at Christmas yeah. and then the grandkids. So like the list gets very long. Thus is why Thus. we circled back to what's really important about Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me just say, I'm going to buy a pack of gum. Yeah. <laughs> that takes care of everybody. <laughs> Well, not really. We have to get two packs of gum. We yeah. have a lot of people. Yeah, you're a anyway. scrooge. <laughs> so what, what, how do you, what's your way of making Christmas great? Or what you, well, the things that I think about for Christmas that make it great, honestly, are not the getting of gifts or even, to be honest with you, where I'm at in life, it feels stressful getting gifts. I love to give them, but I don't like to get them to give them. So that, and the whole online shopping thing, I don't love that. I'm a scratch and sniff girl, so oh, I want to like touch it. And this year we just can't, we can't shop like we used to. So this is no joke. Today I was at the dollar store, big shout out to 99 cent store because they're essential. And yeah, they are. I bought cards for everybody. And this year we're taking our budget, we're putting in cash and we're just going to give cards this year. The kids just cards found that cash. out. <laughs> cards and cash. Yeah. So if I get a roll of ones. Yeah. We'll be fine. <laughs> we'll be able to take care of it. Yes. But so, I, so that, okay. So, let, that, so how, that, how so, is it great? Yeah. So what makes it great to me is not that whole thing. That feels very right. stressful. Uh, it is the um, creating home, 
creating memories in the home. I've always loved making home and baking feels like Christmas. So my all my girls and my daughters in law and their friends, whatever, will all end up in the kitchen yeah. cooking. And um, I don't know. I, I even the party situation has never been a big emphasis for me outside of home. I enjoy connecting with other people, but I don't live for that kind of life. I, it really is about kind of in the home, yeah. which is a good thing since we can't go anywhere this year. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's no parties this year. That's it. <laughs> no. There's nothing. I know. Anyway, I, you know, I was thinking about, um, you know, things that I like, things I don't like about Christmas, and getting ready for Christmas mm-hmm. is always something I don't don't enjoy. So, what does that mean to you? Getting well, ready for Christmas, uh, you know, get buying gifts, you know, oh. trying to allocate money and yeah, it's the budget stuff. But yeah. it's also, I don't, I never know what to buy. So I'm thankful that you buy. Yeah. for all of our kids mm-hmm. and all of that and obviously this year it's cash so yeah I'll, it's gonna be easy it'll be easy but yeah. that part is too stressful because i never know what to get i never know yeah. what to get you the best thing is like you go to the store or go online and we go what are the 10 things you like yeah. and then i'll buy you two of them yeah or three or well you usually say like give me like <laughs> a few ideas and so the, I keep helps. it, if you keep it smaller, then you know, the chances are higher that you're going to get what you really want. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but that's stressful for me. So that's yes. kind of a, I think a, a lot of people pain. feel that way, mm-hmm. but you know, the decorations, um, I don't like them to go up real early like you do. And you've gotten our kids to believe that that's the way to do it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, what was it like November 1st? So actually, it was October 31st think about that I that. made you pull the boxes My, to, down. To our listeners, I just want to say, think about that. Yeah, I know. I'm not real proud of that. At the same time, this is an unusual year, Tim. Yeah. We're breaking a it's lot of a rules. It's been a tough year. You're it's breaking the rules. Year. But I will say this too. I really feel like even if I waited an extra three weeks to ask you, you'd still be grumpy about it. Well, I don't <laughs> do it. I, I mean, I did the outside lights. I know. And then you got excited once it was down. Yeah. And you once started, it became you, December. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thanksgiving was over. Yep. Yeah, I was in. Yeah. Actually, I put them up Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> anyway, so, but the thing that makes Christmas great for me is not the commercialism, obviously, that bothers me. And a lot of people feel that way. Some people really enjoy that. But I like when the family's together and the kids have usually slept overnight. Uh, uh, when, now mm-hmm. that they're grown, you know, they sleep overnight. And uh, we don't have room for everybody. We've got room for a lot. Yeah. And uh, when we don't have room, like Malachi will sleep on a couch anyway. Oh, the couches he are covered. He could sleep yeah. during a lightning storm. <laughs> it just doesn't bother him. And, and, uh, but the really the thing, and it sounds so cliche, but the thing that I really enjoy is remembering Christ, mm-hmm. his birth. And, you know, reading scripture, we do. (laughs) Crazy told me the other day, she said, you know, it seems like dad on Christmas morning, the scripture reading is getting shorter and shorter. (laughs) And it's And they're not mad about it. (laughs) Yeah. And they're not mad about it. The kids, the grandkids are like sitting there like, come on, just hurry up, man. (laughs) They're sitting there looking at the gifts going. Yeah, Jesus, right. Okay, where's the gift? I will say this. I want to I want to encourage you that I'm very grateful for the 15 years you have faithfully done that with our kids. And my dad did the same thing. And yes, I was that kid. I don't know if you were that kid too. What you were you're like, "Come on, let's get through it. Get to the good stuff." Yeah. But that there in that process through those years, it laid a foundation of really knowing what Christmas was about. And so I think it's an important discipline and I think it's a way of you know, um, kind of starting the day, uh, honoring the real purpose of why we do what we do. Cause there's a lot that we do that we don't even know why we do it. And we'll talk about that today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the things, in fact, talk about it right now, somebody asked this question, uh, why do we celebrate Christmas on the 25th? Was Mm -hmm. Jesus born on December 25th? And the answer is probably not. He probably was not born on December in December or even in the winter. Mm -hmm. Uh, We know that because, or we could assume that the shepherds were out watching their flock in the field. And, and the thing that's uh, known about that is usually in the winter times, in the cold months of the year in Palestine, they would pull them into their ranch farm flock Mm -hmm. in bring the herd in closer. and mm-hmm. bring the flock in and, and bring them in closer where they could be protected. Mm-hmm. Um, now, 
it's not like super cold there, but it would get cold. Sure. You know, it'd get cold. So they pro- it probably was uh, not winter. But having said that, um, you know, people say, well, isn't December 25th a pagan holiday? Did that is that where that came from? So I thought I'd share just a little yeah, bit about this. It. And so what happened was uh, there was a public holiday in the Roman Empire. And it was on December 25th. And it followed the winter equinox, the uh, winter uh, solstice, I mean. So the since uh, uh, December 21st mm-hmm. is the shortest day of the year, right? And the longest night. night. Mm-hmm. And that the day after that was the turning. So now it's going to start getting, the days are going to get a little longer and the nights are going to get a little shorter. Okay. And they worshiped the god of Saturn. Wow. And uh, many of the Romans did, and it was across the Roman Empire. And the ancient Roman festival was called uh, Saturnalia. Saturnalia. And Saturnalia. Saturnalia. Okay. Uh, not easy to say, but fun no. to celebrate, I yeah. guess. <laughs> anyway, so the what they did was, it's interesting, it's going to sound so familiar, they would take evergreens and they would put them into bows and, or how do you say it, bows? Bows. Mm-hmm. Bows. Put them into bows and wreaths and hang them around their house. Oh. They would decorate their doorways. Okay. They would decorate around their windows. Mm-hmm. And they would have that smell of the evergreens. I right? thought Martha Stewart invented that. Well, she did. <laughs> She's a, from ancient Rome. You wonder how old from she is. From the planet Saturnalia. That's <laughs> yes, from Saturn, right? So the god of, of, of Saturn was worshipped on that because it was just now you've got the days are going to start getting longer. So it was this great oh, okay. celebration. And they would feast with food and and so forth and, and dancing and all kinds of gift okay. giving and so forth. Making. So that's how the Christmas celebration was combined with that. Now, you can look at that and go, well, they took a pagan holiday and turned it into Christian. Well, what they actually did was they took the convenience of society and society norms, and they were off anyway. These were a national holiday, an empire holiday of Rome. And so that was a perfect opportunity to celebrate Christ. So they kind of co-opted. They co-opted. That's right. brilliant. Instead of yeah. seeing this as a negative, I think we should see it as a positive. Right, yeah. And take the things that are not pagan and and not worshiping, uh, you know, like the Druids, mm-hmm. uh, which I'll talk about in a moment, uh, had a similar, like a Christmas tree. Hmm. I'll explain that in a moment. But it's interesting that they took the con- society and they turned it on its head with Christianity. Yeah. And I think... It's important for us to be biblical in everything we do. Now, we don't know, the Gospels don't say when Jesus was born. Uh, We know the uh, uh, period of time that he was born. It is assumed he was born 5 or 6 BC, but that doesn't matter. What, What really matters is that Jesus was born and he became, he became the Messiah that would save the world, mm-hmm. right? And so they wanted to celebrate that. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, the great celebration is not the birth of Christ. The great celebration right. is the death and resurrection, resurrection of Christ. Mm-hmm. So we're told, we're, we're really told to celebrate that. Yeah. But I don't think there's anything wrong with us celebrating that. The other thing is the Christmas trees. So somebody asked a question, um, and, and I'll just say, I'm not going to say where this was, but I went to a church when I was a kid, and I was a teenager, I went to this church. It was my, not my dad's. And the pastor of this church mm-hmm. did not allow Christmas trees in the wow. church. Oh, my goodness. And so there was, and he discouraged people from having Christmas trees in their homes. Yeah. And the reason he did is because the Christmas tree came, uh, uh, came into existence from the uh, Germans. The Germans had gotten this from the Druids, the Celtics, oh. and uh, the Germans had began to celebrate um, a, a festival, and uh, they had a tree. But here's an not related to Christmas at all. Like, yeah, not it was. Really? It was oh, related okay. to Christmas. So as they began to immigrate to America, okay. 
the United States became more and more about Christmas trees. Okay. Before that, in in fact, I I got a little little factoid I wanted to share. In 1659, a law was established in Massachusetts uh, outlawing the celebration of Christmas uh, Christmas trees with Christmas trees. With the exception of going to church, so they they the only celebration they could do on December twenty fifth was to go to church. They weren't allowed to have Christmas trees. Hanging decorations of any kind was outlawed, especially on Christmas trees. In America, yeah, in sixteen fifty nine. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, it was before I went to high school. As more <laughs> uh, German immigrants entered America, the dr- tradition became more accepted. So the Germans were the ones that really impacted our thinking about Christmas. So there was this kind of rejection of the date, mm-hmm. December 25th, because it was considered something, uh, you know, uh, uh, accepted uh, with the new, um, the the shorter day getting longer now, yeah, and and so forth after winter solstice. So um, it's a kind of an interesting thing, and I yeah. think it was. I can I can't remember what president, but a president, a um, hundred and fifty years ago, or maybe two hundred years ago, I can't remember what it was. Looked up the date; doesn't really matter. Made an edict that December twenty fifth was a national holiday to celebrate the birth of Christ. Wow, I'd love to know that actual I, I, date. I, 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 you could yeah, Google it right now. I could <laughs> Google it while you're talking, but well, uh, I'll just yeah. say "Das ist sehr gut, ja? <laughs> for that's, the new date, Tim. That's yeah. all I know in German. <laughs> that's really good. Yeah, so you bilingual. betcha. Oh, wait. <laughs> you betcha. Don't, now you, <laughs> don't you know? Wait, that's Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, you just got to Minnesota. Uh, so how do we handle all this stuff? Yeah. How do we handle like Christmas trees, uh, December 25th, Druids, uh, paganism, uh, German uh, false theology mm-hmm. that they had, mm-hmm. um, you know, the Roman Empire and, and all of those things. How do we handle it? We need to admit, first of all, that the Christmas tree is not in Scripture. Right. December 25th is not in, in, in uh, Scripture. Uh, scripture. Mm-hmm. But it is convenient day for us to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Right. And the gift giving was part of their festival back then. But we do that. And I don't think there's anything wrong mm-hmm. with that. It's a nice way to show family love mm-hmm. and friendship love. Mm-hmm. But it's to celebrate the birth of Jesus. And I think that's really a, a great opportunity to do it. Yes. Don't think it's the day. December 25th is mm-hmm. not the day. Christmas tree is not a scriptural thing. So don't worry about those. You know, I used to think about the lights and all the lights that were up. And people would go, you know, it's so commercialized. Look at all these lights. Yeah, yeah but Jesus came into this world as, as the light, light of, the, of world. the world. That's right. Yeah, That lights the hearts of every man, uh-huh. it says in, in John chapter 1. And so... I think we just flip that yeah. and let's see it from that perspective. I think that's so so good. Take that's those, how I think. Take you know. those modern day uh, versions of of Christmas and relate them back to the original story for our kids and our grandkids. Yeah. And you, yeah, point it cr- backwards. Your mm-hmm. your Christmas tree, yeah. make it about Christ. Yeah. Your your celebration, make it about Christ. Yeah. Your the lights, make it about Christ. All of this, the family. Mm-hmm. I'll be thankful around the person of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we, we, we talked about this uh, in getting ready for this uh, podcast. We wanted to talk about comparing the 2020 Christmas. Mm-hmm. You know, we're under at the time of the recording of this, which is uh, about a week ago. Um, we were in a stay at home order. Probably still am as you're listening to this. Yes. Um, uh, on uh, the, this Monday, uh, if you get it the day it, it comes out under a stay at home order. And we literally are not allowed to leave our homes unless it's an emergency, or at least that's what the governor has said. Mm -hmm. And, uh, this has been a tough year coming up on a year of, of basically staying home where we are in California. It's been more stringent than a lot of places, but other places have had it worse than us too. So yeah, it's almost like, where did this year go? (laughs) So what we thought is we would go kind of the, the first, celebrate the real birth of Jesus. Yeah. When that happened. Original Christmas celebration. The original Christmas, mm-hmm. uh, we might say, and today. What, yeah. What's that like? There so are some parallels. We wrote down several yeah. things. What are yeah. some of the things So that the we year wrote of down? Christ's birth, um, you you got to remember, um, 
course, uh, Mary was pregnant before being married, yeah. which was very difficult to explain, especially back in those days. Hey, she yeah, was Mary's pregnant. Yeah. And it's supernatural. An unwed, okay, Joseph, unwed sure. mom, yeah. which is a common yeah. issue uh, in today's mm-hmm. world, for sure. Um, fortunately, Joseph, you know, uh, having had an experience with um, the supernatural <laughs> and then being visited by an angel, he, of course, stood by her side through that. But she was an unwed mom. Um, and then uh, there was the Roman occupation of Israel, which yeah, but, which was really tough brutal, because, yeah. you know, the Romans, uh, even in that first century and throughout time, and you see the fall of the Roman Empire later on, but um, you know, the Roman, uh, expansion, uh, they were, they used, uh, legal controls mm-hmm. and they had, um, uh, you know, different authorities that they would send governors and so forth that would rule over people. And in Israel, mm-hmm. uh, the children of Israel were not allowed to worship God like they were used to. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've heard a lot of Christians say today, there's a lot of restrictions coming against Christians. There's, Mm -hmm. you know, discrimination. You Mm -hmm. can't go to church, but you can go to a bar. You can't go to a church, but a gym is open. Well, there may be some of those, but the reality is, and and I don't know people's motives. Mm -hmm. I I know some of these people couldn't care less about Christianity. Some can't stand Christianity, Mm -hmm. but you don't want to get a a victim mentality. Mm -hmm. We want to go, you know, the world's not going to love us. That's just... Christ Mm -hmm. said that, you know, Mm -hmm. if you really stand for me, uh, you're not going to be loved by the world. So uh, they had the Roman occupation, Mm -hmm. which was oppressive. Yes. I mean, I mean, you could be killed. Yeah. uh, If if you were not following the directives. It was a tough tough time. And then they had, of course, to travel to Bethlehem for the census. Yeah, the census. On a donkey. Here you got this young pregnant. Can you imagine all you mamas out there pregnant on a donkey? How was how long was that ride? Do you know? I don't know. That would be interesting to it check was, out. Any any ride is too long when you're pregnant yeah. with a baby. Yeah. Um, but I often think about the actual manger. And um, if you have little kids and you don't have a physical manger to pull out at Christmas, Target has a really cute set this year. And my daughter-in-law got it and is teaching our youngest about Jesus in the manger. But there is something pretty powerful about looking at the um, raw... Uh, humility in which he came to this earth yeah. in a manger with live animals, basically in a feeding trough. Yeah. And she gave That's birth a manger, in, and, manger and they were basically traveling homeless because there was yeah. no inn for them to sleep in, which this time of year, of course, we're having so many issues with homelessness all over um, the world right now because of what's going on. But um, there, there, there are the, so many common denominators um, uh, back in that day and today. And, you know, you think about, um, uh, after Christ's birth, there was Herod who was in charge. There was a plot to kill Jesus yeah. through that. So then, you know, you got that going yeah. for it. Let me, let me go back to the manger for a minute because, um, I, I remember I, I went to see this farm. It was a friend of my dad's who was, uh, went to our church. My dad's was a pastor and he went to our church this guy, we walked into this barn mm-hmm. and he said, um, what do you think of the smell of this place? Mm-hmm. And I said, it smells really bad. He goes, you know what the smell is? I said, yeah, I think I know. He <laughs> goes, well, that's exactly what it is. This is their bathroom. Wow. And he said, let me, let me take you over here. And he showed me uh, where these cows were and he had some goats on the other side and you know, on this huge, huge barn. Mm-hmm. And he said, um, y'all smell urine, Mm -hmm. you smell feces. Mm -hmm. And he said, and you smell their saliva Mm. and you smell their sweat. Yowza. And he said, I want you to smell this. And I'll never forget what this guy said. And he said, look at that. And it was a trough Mm -hmm. where the cattle would come and they, it was a feeding trough Mm -hmm. and it was really long and it was Mm -hmm. made out of metal. Yeah. And he said, do you know that Jesus first bed was this. Yeah. And he said, I want you to smell what you smell yep. Yep. and think of what they, Joseph and Mary smelled. Yeah. He said, you need to be grateful yes. for everything you have. Yeah, that's good. Your savior mm-hmm. was born in a barn mm-hmm. and placed in a manger. Yeah. And this is an incredible, humiliating yes. yeah. uh, place. 
And I, I never mm-hmm. forgot that. Yeah, and that poignant. smell is so poignant. It's right. exactly yeah. right. And so the manger is not some cool looking manger that we had when we were kids, you yeah. know? So, but yeah. So, uh, yeah. After so he was born. So relate that to 2020 now. Our, All right. Our whole Christmas experience because we're running out of time. <laughs> so people, people are struggling financially. Yes. Everywhere. Like you said, there's a lot of businesses that have closed. And, uh, you know, think about the people that are really struggling with all of that. Mm -hmm. Um, now we have not had a tremendous amount of financial distress this year, but we know people who have lost their businesses. Mm -hmm. We know people that work for companies that have been shut down and their career has been sidetracked because of this. And, um, you know, this has been a tough year, Mm -hmm. but if you really see Christ in all that, Mm -hmm. Where, where does he fit? We'll talk about that. But uh, the mental and emotional problems. Yeah, the, we've seen such a huge rise in, uh, of course, mental and emotional distress with people being isolated and locked down, having lost jobs, feeling like they're losing hope and um, kind of letting go of, of of feeling like there's a future. The despair. Mm-hmm. We, one of our, well, three of our sons are first responders, but one of them was talking about so many of their calls now are related to that, you know, yeah. and uh, the breakdown of the family in that process. And it's been devastating. Um, yes, yeah. The homelessness you right. mentioned earlier, yeah, and, and Jesus was was uh, his family, Joseph, Mary, and mm-hmm. and uh, Jesus were homeless, yeah, uh, temporarily. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's people we were driving from on 101. We've never seen yeah. so much homelessness as we were driving yep. through L.A. Yep. Um, how can we make Christmas great yeah. with all of things that have been going right. on with it? We, we wrote down a few things. Why don't you share yeah, a couple of those? Just looking at the too. contrast, uh, or, or the not the contrast, but the comparison of those two, the Christmas we have this year and then looking at Jesus' birth. Uh, the one common denominator um, that that we can have is that we can worship Christ in humility. And in other words, don't focus on what you're giving and what you're getting yeah. as much as worshiping uh the creator you know what and, am i getting by yeah the way? oh i'm not supposed to focus <laughs> on kicking the seat of the pants <laughs> yeah well i definitely don't want to but focus just on to it. make it about worship you yeah. know you think about the humility of the, the the wise men that came and there wasn't yeah. just a few they were in a small space like most of us are yeah. this year with with just a few in underneath your roof and uh making christ worshiping christ the focus so if you will focus on what you have mm-hmm you will forget about what you don't have. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've seen people in, in Africa. I've seen people in Thailand, in Mexico, in mm-hmm. Guatemala, mm-hmm. in Haiti, all over Asia yeah. uh, with nothing. And they're so grateful for the little that they do have. Yeah. So don't focus on what you don't have. Focus on what you do have and be grateful. For, and don't compare your Christmas to any past right. Christmas. Yep. Don't you compare. say, man, we had a great Christmas in, in 73 or 87. Yeah. yeah. No, just what do you have this year yep. and be grateful be for it? Yeah. And then I think it's important to not fear the future. And trust that God has our futures in his hands. And we would encourage you to watch next week. We're going to be talking specifically about hope, hope. and how much hope we have in Christ yeah. in the future. Coming into And how, where we attach our hope. Yes. And the things uh, things are not the things that we attach our hope to. So join us next week. And uh, we would love to share that message with you. And we hope you guys have an awesome Christmas and uh, hunker down in your homes. <laughs> love each other well and be kind. And uh, worship, worship the creator this yeah. week. Merry Christmas. God bless. Bye-bye.